And we'll get back to closers here for a Thursday. Hope everything is going well for you as uh, we get ever closer to a weekend without sports. But we're going to take advantage of that clause in our contract that says, and other stuff. And we're going to talk about some of the other stuff as COVID-19 uh, continues to have its effect, uh, not just on the sports world and not just on us as, as people, but uh, on on folks uh, mental state of mind, because you, you hear all this news every single day, and, and at, at some point in time, you're just kind of enough already. Uh, visiting us with us uh, with us right now from MU Health is Dr. Lane Young-Walker. Uh, she is a, a, a psychiatrist over at MU Healthcare, and I appreciate you taking the time here today, Dr. Uh, Young-Walker. But, you know, f- for you in, in your practice right now, as we're getting deeper and deeper into home isolation and you can't see your friends and, and all the rest of that stuff, what are some of the things that you're seeing or hearing right now that that you, you're calling, you're, you're like, man, I got I to gotta really start watching that kind of stuff? Well, there's some things that I'm, we're seeing which include an increase in anxiety, mm-hmm. and that's um, challenging uh, because some of the things that are occurring with social isolation are making that worse, uh, plus the uncertainty of things day-to-day is making that worse. But, you know, honestly, I'm also seeing some very creative and innovative solutions that families have come up with and how to kind of deal with this as they move forward. Uh, okay. Um, we'll, we'll get to that fun stuff in just a second because everybody's in this new – new world right now where you used to you'd get up in the morning and you'd go to work and then you'd come home and the kids would go off and they'd go to school so everybody's routine has basically been you know thrown into the Yahtzee cup cup and rolled out across the table what's the biggest issue you're seeing with people coping just with not just the the change in the routine but everybody all in the same house so there's a lot of stress that comes with that change, just changing your day-to-day, because mm-hmm. we're creatures of habit. We like things to be consistent, and children definitely like consistency and kind of uh, knowing what to expect next. So that uh, is causing anxiety in individual people. It's causing sometimes tension in the home, um, and so it's sometimes challenging for everyone to remain in the same place, not really be able to leave, and not have some times of frustration and upset. And and it's important for people not to, you know, we, we call it a lot of times in the sports world, it's not personal, it's business. But but how much on the family dynamic it does it become people start to take things personally, especially now that we're, we're all cooped up in the same building together? You know, whenever there's an increase in stress and anxiety, sometimes it's really easy to not be able to step back when things happen and to take things as an attack against me or it's personal yeah. against me. So, yes, we are seeing that sometimes that can happen. Okay, now, you mentioned, and, and Dr. Lena Young-Walker with us here from MU Health, a psychiatrist there. You mentioned earlier in your first answer about some of the creative ways people are dealing with some of this. What are some of those creative ways that other people can adopt and, and kind of relieve the stress just a little bit? So, you know, um, in school, children and teenagers have PE, right? So now we're social isolating. We're staying in the home. Uh, parents who might have gone to the gym to work out are not able to do that anymore. But families have come together on some ways to be more active. So they may take a walk in their neighborhood and just make sure that they're social distancing from other people. If they live in a place that has, you know, a large backyard, they might go out there and, and play a game together or do exercise together. I had one mother tell me that we have an hour every day that we come together and you know, because I can't take my son to basketball practice anymore, then we're going to do some of those drills and warm-ups and things together. So I believe that out of this stress and turmoil can come some creative and and really good ideas. It's bringing families closer together in some respects, too. Are you finding out we got a lot of your, a lot of people you talk to developing brand new uh, skills and habits that had no idea they had? Most definitely. I mean, um, when you think about it, um, the activity level and reduction mm-hmm. of that is, is impacted, but mm-hmm. also engaging with other people. Right. You can't do that in ways that you have before. So I've, I heard one family that actually they get on remote, like uh, Zoom technology or whatever mm-hmm. remote technology they're using, with other families and play games, charades, mm-hmm. different things like that, so that they can still have that kind of engagement with other families in a environment of social distancing, and they're bringing their entire family along. You know, we've seen on TV, and I've had other people talk about, you know, my my child's birthday is coming up. What am I going to do? So getting one of those big signs for the front yard that says happy birthday uh, to, to make it special so that we don't lose some of that. And maybe, you know, having times where friends and family can come to the house but not come in, stay outside, keep their distance, 
and sing a happy birthday song. I mean, a lot of those things are things we wouldn't have ever thought about before, uh, but people are now doing it. Yeah, Dr. Lane Wa- a Young Walker with us here from MU Health, a psychiatrist. Here. We, we've seen that on, most people have seen that on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat, that, you know, the, 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 the parade of cars going through a neighborhood singing happy birthday. And that's one of the things you, you kind of try to keep a routine going, but, but for the kids, uh, you know, especially that elementary school who, who may or may not grasp exactly the what and the why, how do you work with them to, to get them to kind of understand that, yeah, the routine has been broken, but that doesn't mean everything else is broken? I think it's really important as as a parent or or taking care of a child that you are honest and that you communicate. Because whether you know it or not, they're looking at the adults in their life Mm -hmm. um, to try to know how to respond. And it's okay to share that you're anxious or scared. It's okay to be honest because that helps to validate their own experiences. And so then really talking about what are the things that we know and what are the things that we don't know. What can we control and not control and have that conversation and then set up that routine? We're going to get up every day at this time. We're going to earmark a certain amount of time for homework, some time for maybe family activity, time for us to have dinner together as a family, and then time for mom and dad and kids to have some self-care time, time alone, because we have to be able to do all of those things to feel really secure through the day. Dr. Lane Young Walker with us here on the closest MU Healthcare Psychiatrist. You know, one of the other por- important things I know I'm, I've been trying to keep in touch with my brothers and my dad. Uh, they both live out on the East Coast. My wife's been trying to keep in touch with her folks as well. They're they're stuck at home because they're in that prime age group. How do you keep up some of those relationships when you're so used to the the day to day human contact aspect? Mm-hmm. So, you know, there are things that we have at our hands that we didn't have maybe 20 years ago. I mean, we've always had telephones, so calling people up and checking on them and seeing how they're doing is a great thing to do. But, you know, in addition, there's uh, some ways that you can Skype or FaceTime, um, use ways to actually see the other person on the other end and spend some quality time with them. Um, And I think all those things are are really important, not losing sight, not only of the family you're self-isolating with, but your extended family and friends. And and the last last part on this one, because this is also going to probably be something that, that tags along with the anxiety and the fact that the routine is no longer normal and you're trying to adjust to that. What about depression? What are some of the, because the, the, a family member usually will recognize it before the person who is suffering from it. What are some of the things that other people need to be aware of with somebody mm-hmm. else's mental health? So if someone is experiencing some significant depression, you would likely see a change in their sleeping patterns, which if you're not with them, it may be something you have to ask them. A change in their appetite or eating, um, a reduction uh, in their just pleasure in life, things that normally would have been fun for them or not, things that they might have found interest in talking about, um, or things that they could do they're not. Um, also just really feeling down or having a lot of increased irritability. Either of those mood changes can happen with depression. Um, and then some people that get really depressed may start to think about hurting themselves, and they may say things about that or make comments about not being, you know, worthwhile to anybody or, you know, those are things that, that really I think it's it's okay to ask those questions. Um, if there's a, a concern or a fear, you may not see it if you're not with them, but there is, like I said, those FaceTime, Skype options to be able to see people and kind of touch base and figure out how they're doing. Dr. Lane Wa- Young-Walker with us here on The Closing. I'm going to wrap up on this. You mentioned earlier, you know, self-care. What are some of the things that folks can do to make sure that they're taking proper care of themselves, not just physically, but but the mental side of things? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's important um, that routine and that consistency is critical. So mm-hmm. one of the things that will help is trying to create that. Other things are working very hard to get some sleep because sleep is restorative. It really helps us to be able to go forward in the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, Making sure that eating is healthy and well-balanced meals. Um, If you like to read, then having some time to read a book. Uh, Maybe there's some activities you haven't really been able to do before uh, because of being so busy, but now you can crochet or you can uh, do or pick up hobbies that you didn't have time to do before. And all of those things, I think, will help with self-care. And, and we'll we'll end up on this one here because everybody's working from home or working in a brand new environment, and uh, a lot of things are are really weird and unusual. 
for you as as you've gone through your day? What's the most unusual thing that you found out about uh, about yourself as you've gone through a day going, wow, um, here I am stuck at home? So for me as an essential um, health care professional, mm-hmm. I'm at work every day. Mm-hmm. I'm at the hospital. I'm at um, MUPC. So I don't get the luxury of staying at home, but what I've noticed is Every meeting is by Zoom or some sort of video venue instead of being in the room together. And the one thing I think I've realized is even though that's great and I'm glad we have the technology, I miss people sitting in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of back to to earlier, just the, the human contact. Uh, aspect mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. Dr. Lane Young Walker, again, a psychiatrist over at MU Healthcare. If folks are, are having problems, how do they, how do they reach out to get some help? So there are uh, lots of different resources. Um, in fact, here at MU Healthcare, we are continuing to have our adult and child outpatient clinic um, mm-hmm. by video. Um, so you can reach out to have um, psychiatrist and or therapist to try to get an appointment. But there's also some apps about anxiety and depression. I think Salvello is one of them. So there are some things that you can look for on on your own. There, of course, are those crisis hotlines that always existed. So if you're a person who's really thinking about hurting yourself, I would really encourage you to call that the suicide uh, hotline or the crisis hotline. All right, and please make sure, folks, you're taking care of good, good, not just good physical health, but good mental health, care of yourself. Uh, Dr. Lane Young-Walker, MU Healthcare Psychiatrist. Dr. Young-Walker, thank you very much for the time today. I really do appreciate it, uh, and, and good luck navigating your way through all of this. All right, well, you have a great day. You can join the conversation anytime. Call 442-8255. The Closers on KFRU and KLIK.